Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Cabasi and today I'm going to be going over something different. It's not much of my editing tutorials, but I'm going to be going over Photoshop basics, which I've been wanting to go over. So you're probably wondering what you're looking at. Um, it's a really a very simple explanation. I can't really draw that well, but this is a picture of a pizza. I love pizza, but I drew it for a good reason. Now, as you can see, the pizza consists of, I, I, I think it's so funny I'm talking about pizza right now. <laughs> so it consists of the crust and then the cheese and then the toppings, right? I mean, I, I mean you've had a pizza before, right? I mean, hopefully, because it's amazing. Now, you're probably wondering what this has anything, I mean, what it has anything to do with anything Photoshop. I like to equate pizzas kind of to raster layers. Now, if you don't know what a raster layer is, don't freak out. They're very simple to use and they're very handy. Now, the first thing you're going to want to understand is what a raster layer does. Now, think of the crust as your background. So this is background. This is your background. So basically, it's the first thing that opens up. Whenever you open up anything, it will be your background by default. Now the cheese, I think again, pretty hilarious. Um, this would be your raster layer. Oh god, my okay, raster lagger. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, you guys know what this says. Now the toppings on the pizza they would be considered the adjustments. Okay, I'm just, I gave up filters. Okay, I just gave up there. Now, the crust is gonna be the crust. You can't change it. It's just the solid foundation of the pizza, obviously. And then you have the cheese, which is the raster layer. And the cheese, you can remove it, but it also, the cheese is also, it's separate from the crust, but it also helps kind of make the pizza what it is without, I mean, without the cheese, what do you got? It kind of lays a foundation for the toppings, which are little things you can add. You don't need to have them. You could just have the cheese, but yeah. So hopefully this makes, this little analogy helps you understand a little bit more about raster layers and why they're so important. Now the reason why the raster layers are not the crust is because you can change them up. You can remove the cheese if you want. You don't have to have the toppings, but the crust you have to have. So in getting rid of this, and I made this analogy on a raster layer. Now I'm going to get rid of the, actually I'm going to make a new file. So I'm going to go to Command N. And by default, whatever you have copied and copied into your computer, it will come up to the exact size. So the width and the height is based on what you already have opened. So I'm going to go ahead and just rotate this really quickly. Okay. So we just have a simple background image. Now this is a plain document. Nothing special is on here. Let's say I want to draw on this. Okay. That and then... Okay. But let's say I change my mind. Let's say I want to add something yellow on here. Just a okay. But let's say I want to just move this. I don't like, I just want to move it a little, right? So how are you supposed to move this? I'm going to get my move tool. And as you can see, you can't move it because the layer is locked. This is where the raster layer comes in. Now the background for me personally, I never touch the background. I usually just keep it plain. Now, what you're going to want to do is first make a new, we're going to want not want to do that first of all, but you're going to want to go make a new document. And then instead of drawing or doing whatever you want directly on the background layer, just make a new raster layer. So go ahead and there's like a little button down here. You can make a new raster layer by clicking this button or you can go to layer, new, layer, and you can just make a raster layer. You can name this whatever you want. So you can just write, you know, Jessica. I'm just gonna write Jessica. And now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna write, damn, okay, there we go. 
Jessica rules. Okay. Now let's add another raster layer. Hi. And let's change this color to purple. Again, these are all different raster layers. So I'm doing, I'm writing over that. Now I'm going to add one more. Actually, I'm not going to confuse you. I'm just going to keep it to two right now. So we have the high raster layer and then the Jessica raster layer. Now let's say I want to move the Jessica raster layer. So what you're going to want to do is actually just select that raster layer. And now you can move it. Isn't that great? And then let's say you want to move the high raster layer. You can move that too. It's completely separate. These are not on the same layer because I made them separately. Now if you get rid of the background layer, you can see that this is by itself. It's completely transparent. And then this is by itself also. So let's say you change your mind. You don't want the high anymore. It's really ugly. It's not matching right now. You can just literally just delete this. And now you just have the first raster layer that you made, which again is very handy. So, I mean, this is pretty much a basic two raster layers. Another cool thing you can do is if you double click the raster layer, you can add different effects, you know, drop shadow, inner shadow, color over. You can change the color if you want. Um, I would just go ahead and have fun with this. I used to do I used to do this effect when I was like 15, but yeah. <laughs> so again, you can have fun with this. You can turn off the effects, but the basics are the basics. Raster layers are extremely handy. You're gonna want to do something on a separate layer just in case you change your mind. You want to have flexibility with what you do, and also you can make a cool effect. So you can do like a gradient or something. You can do something like separately and you don't have to worry about, you can move it around, stuff like that. You know, you're not going to have to worry about it being on all one layer. For instance, you want to make this smaller, go ahead, you're not affecting that pink layer. And again, I just selected that bottom layer. The gradient layer, you can also do specific changes just to that layer. So let's say you want this gradient thing to be um, darker. You can set it to different layer settings. So you can go through darken, um, multiply. You can also lower the opacity of these layers. So each layer will have a specific function. And don't, I mean, if this seems overwhelming, just, you know, take it easy and, um, don't freak out because it's really not that complicated. Just think of it as just separate layers that do different things. So if you, if I want to change this, let's say um, it's blocking it, which I'll make it. Let's say it's blocking it just a little bit. Now you can't see it. The great thing about raster layers is you can pull this up to change the arrangement of the layer. So you're pulling it up. Now it's on top. And you can also, again, change the layer settings. So you can change the effect of whatever is on that raster layer. So you can go multiply, um, lighten. You can do some cool stuff. Overlay. You know, difference. It really just depends on um, what kind of effect you're going for and what you're trying to do. But this is the basics. This is the basic. These are the basics, okay. Yeah, I've been talking for too long. So, anyways, hope I did not confuse you. Hope this was very easy to follow. Please leave any comments if you have any questions. But um, practice with the raster layers. Make new raster layers, see what they do. Just play around because that's the only way you're going to learn. Hopefully, um, this has been helpful to you. Um, thank you so much for watching.